For some reason, you're here to watch an animation about the brain-eating amoeba. That's scary and interesting at the same time. What is this amoeba? Where do you think it was first discovered? Absolutely. Unsurprisingly, it was first discovered in Australia in 1965, but it's believed to have evolved in the United States. Its scientific name is Nigleria phalari. It loves warm water. It can survive in water as hot as 113 degrees Fahrenheit. It's found in warm places, mud puddles, warm, slow-flowing rivers, untreated swimming pools, and even in soil. However, it can't live in salt water or in properly treated swimming pools. Nigleria phalari normally eats bacteria, but if it gets into humans through the nose, it uses the brain as a food source. Activities like diving, water sports, water skiing, in which water is forced into the nose, increase the risk of infection. Fortunately, it doesn't transmit from an infected person to another person. Now, you might be thinking, how the hell does this amoeba find its way to the brain? Well, it's just smart, you know. It has a good understanding of the human anatomy. Jokes aside, it is attracted by the chemicals secreted by the nerve cells of the olfactory nerve. It travels through the olfactory nerve and enters the frontal lobe of the brain. All right, if you have the medical student syndrome, you should be thinking, oh no, I dived in the swimming pool once some time ago. Relax. This condition is very rare. It occurs from zero to eight times per year, almost always from July to September. It takes two to 15 days for symptoms to appear after the amoeba enters the nose. Symptoms are fever, headache, stiff neck, and sometimes seizures. Unfortunately, there's no good treatment option yet for this disease. Some drugs are available to kill the amoeba in test tubes, but even when treated with these drugs, only a very few patients survive. How can you protect yourself from brain-eating amoeba? Avoid water sports in warm, still water during the months from July to September. It's also a good idea to avoid stirring up mud while taking part in such activities. If you ever decide to cleanse your nostrils, be sure to use distilled water and not tap water.